Hello and willkommen. Welcome to Aiden Eyewitness. This is part two of Building Boom in Manchester 2021. Our cycle ride to view current and future construction projects will take us north on Wilmslow Road, along the so-called Oxford Road corridor, and into the heart of Manchester city centre. We'll look at plans for the tow track, visit a new ground scraper, and on this site, I'll conjure up an architecturally significant building constructed in 1911 and needlessly destroyed in 1974. Please support what I'm doing, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and if you've got opinions or information to share, please comment. Universities are often trendsetters in architecture. They often have the vision and the budget to bring groundbreaking buildings into reality. The Toastrack building, or Hollings building, is one of the most famous modern buildings in Manchester, and it was built in 1960. Architect was Leonard C. Howitt at Manchester City Architects Department. Due to its shape, it was called the Toastrack, and its neighbouring circular low-rise building was named the Poached Egg. Very appropriate, as it was constructed for use as a catering college. It was part of Manchester Metropolitan University, then the site was sold. Refurbishment is partly completed. The circular building is already in use as a gym. The toast truck will house apartments. Also, new apartments will be constructed above the workshop buildings. And a new residential tower will appear at the front with a distinctive design i describe as a curving stack. Architects Olia Smirthwaite state that the retrofitting of the workshop and gymnasium buildings will be reversible if it's decided to return the building to its original use. Heading north along Wilmslow Road, we can see some refurbishment of the Manchester Infirmary Building near Whitworth Park. The buildings were designed by Edwin Hall and John Brooke and officially opened in 1909. Manchester University Students Union Building was renovated some years ago. Further work is in progress at the corner of the building. Across Oxford Road, there is renovation and construction work on what used to be the NatWest Bank. It closed in 2017. At the rear, it looks like an extension is being built, though there are no displays to provide more information. Manchester University is investing £1 billion over a 10-year period to provide an even better campus. I'll be featuring the university in another video. At the eastern end of Dover Street, looking across Upper Brook Street, New low-rise housing is under construction. This is part of the new Brunswick development area I featured in my German influence video. On Booth Street, we find what must be Manchester University's biggest and most ambitious construction project for many years. It's the new engineering campus designed by Dutch architects Mekanu. The Manchester Engineering Campus Development, or MECD, must qualify as a ground scraper, measuring via the Google map. I make the building to be around 200 metres or 650 feet long, and the width 42 metres or 140 feet. So if it was upended, it would stand as tall as Deansgate Gardens South Tower. It's said to be the size of 11 football pitches. It would take me about a minute to cycle from one end to the other on my Brompton. There's an entrance at the southern end on Booth Street and at the northern end on Grosvenor Street. It seems to have been under construction for ages, and it's certainly one of the most impressive new buildings in Manchester. Neighbouring buildings are also part of the development, including, on the left, Oddfellows Hall, the former English language teaching centre where I once taught English language. Not far away on Downing Street is Project Skate Park and Cafe. It recently benefited from a new extension. Just to the north of here, a new park is under construction, next to the River Medlock. They say it's the first park in Manchester city centre for a hundred years, though Hume Park was completed about 20 years ago. I can't wait to see how the River Medlock is incorporated into the project. The name of the park? Mayfield Park. Mayfield Depot is the name currently given to the former station building, which served as an overspill station for London Road Station, now Piccadilly. The building was disused, but in recent years it served as an arts and nightclub venue. Piccadilly Point student residences were originally brown, but have now been reclad in blue. I understand that although the building is said to be safe for occupation, they just wanted to give a fresh aesthetic. Back on Oxford Road, on the site of the former MMU Students Union building, the Manchester Metropolitan University Institute of Sport is under construction and is set to open 
in 2022. The building will provide research, teaching and support space for students and staff. It's part of MMU's Estates Master Plan Investment Programme, which mirrors that of the neighbouring Manchester University. Executive architect is Chapman Taylor. Let's pause to look north along Oxford Road, a scene I've captured many times in photos and now on video. It's seen huge changes over recent years, not least the BBC moving to Salford Quays. Just to the right, off the frame, is the new development on the site of the BBC building. But first we'll go over to the Mancunian Way roundabout. Recladding is in progress on the Parkway Gate student residences. These three towers of uneven shape were designed by Simpson Hoare Architects. Currently, a major operation is underway to reclad the facades. Whether it's for safety or aesthetic reasons, I'm not sure at the moment. If you can offer any information, please write in the comments. On the nearby site, north of the Mancunian Way, a new MMU building is in its early stages of construction. It's the new home for the Faculty of Science and Engineering, opening in 2023. It's quite remarkable the amount of construction that's been going on at both city centre universities. In my estimation, it's unprecedented when I look back over the past few decades. On the site of this former multi-storey car park on the corner of Great Marlborough Street and Hume Street, a so-called tombstone skyscraper has been approved by Manchester City Council, despite what's described as a tsunami of opposition and the threat of legal action. Just one vote on the planning committee secured the go-ahead. And so we arrive at the replacement for the former BBC building on Oxford Road. It's Circle Square, a group of tall buildings arranged around a central open area, offering a mixture of residential, commercial and public space, a fully integrated residential and commercial neighbourhood. And those were the words of Chris Oglesby, CEO at Bruntwood. That quote taken from an article on Manchester Confidential. A few blocks to the north of Circle Square, we find New Square, another Simpson Hoare development, consisting of three residential buildings situated right next to the Rochdale Canal and the Gay Village. They are grouped around a central courtyard and square which is open to the public. There's space for restaurants and a small supermarket. Just a short distance along the canal on Chalton Street we find the campus development where older buildings have been incorporated into a new development that has contrasting architectural styles including these distinctive house-shaped elements with gables at the top of the building. This is the site of part of the former MMU campus. This is how it looked before. The development incorporates a whole street leading to a courtyard which looks across the water to Canal Street. It contains a garden with an exhibition area. If you fancy living here, there are apartments for rent. I think campus is great. It's a project of capital and centric. Now we move to the north side of the village by the car park between Bloom Street and Major Street. On this site once stood a groundbreaking building that was needlessly demolished in the 1970s. Here's a rough sketch of the building named York House. I'll be featuring it soon in another video. Looking from Bloom Street, we see the rear facade of our next development. This was the view in the past. I remember reading that the original plan was to refurbish the 13-storey 1960s office building, but later it was decided it would be demolished. The address of the Clayton Hotel is 55 Portland Street. The Brooklyn Hotel is said to offer a taste of Brooklyn in the heart of Manchester. And that reminds me, I have another video in preparation looking at the similarities in architecture and other interesting aspects between the two cities on either side of the Atlantic. That will be online soon. Close by, next to St Peter's Square, another building is under construction on the site of a 1970s office block. It will house both Motel 1 and Stay City Apartments. I remember the first Motel 1 appearing on the site of the Twisted Wheel Club on Whitworth Street. Like the Clayton Hotel, it features a decorative, precast concrete facade. Many buildings are being newly created, others are being renovated. Scaffolding surrounds number 81 King Street, also known as the Reform Club. It's one of the most magnificent buildings in the city centre, inside and out. In 2017, it became Grand Pacific, 
a colonial style bar and restaurant. And finally, we come to the biggest renovation project in the city, the Town Hall. First opened in 1878, it's one of the biggest and most magnificent buildings in Manchester, and it's many people's favourite building in Manchester. Over the years, the structure was steadily deteriorating, so it was decided to give it a complete renovation from top to bottom, taking several years. The information boards tell the story. These are the best information boards on any construction site around. All sites should have them. So that's the end of Building Boom 2021 Part 2, but there are still more developments dotted around the city, further out and across the Irwell in Salford. So expect Manchester Building Boom Part 3 to arrive sometime soon. I hope you found this video of interest, and please feel free to post a comment. I love to receive thoughtful comments and currently I can reply to every one. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell button for notifications as I don't have a fixed upload schedule. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Thank you very much for watching. Auf Wiedersehen. See you again soon.